Right on, so I've just watched your, well I've watched your first video yesterday and I've just watched the second one the, on Hex and um, you've reached out to me on Twitter. So let's take it from, let's take it from the top. Why did you, re why did you feel that you, why did you want to reach out to me, mate? Well, I happened upon uh, one of your posts regarding, you know, covering this project. And I really felt like I had something to say about it, especially because I'm concerned. I've, I've read a lot about people taking out, you know, home equity lines of credit on their homes and loans and stuff, investing their life savings in this project. And I find it really alarming. It seems like time and time again, even though a lot of these scams are, are really set up the same way, again and again, they attain traction and we see people become victim of them. Yeah, and that's the key question here, isn't it? And, you know, where where are the victims? Well, I think, you know, that's, that's, that's the selling point, right? It's because for now, you know, they have had these gains over the past year, and that's a way to, to attract more and more people. As we remember, Big Connect and these other Ponzi's, they did incredibly well and made a lot of people a lot of money until the day that it crashes. Yeah, no, I actually, I interviewed with Carlos Matos um, in December. I was in Miami at this conference and um, I was talking to him about, you know, what happened after that. And, and actually it seems that he only became more and more popular and famous, regardless of who was, you know, became a victim so i'm just thinking like there is no victims that i've been able to identify i've interviewed about 50 people so far in the last three or four months and none of them are, arguably none of them are victims so i'm just trying to you know slowly it's becoming more of a kind of question of okay if it is a scam and people are locking up for 555, this 15 year lockup period that the hex stakers partake in, we're not going to see any victims for a long, long time, uh, you know, eco economically speaking. Well, I think we're going to see that a lot sooner than we may think. I mean, I think the tipping point is very close. It doesn't take someone to liquidate a lot for the price to completely crash. Now, just because people are staking five years doesn't mean that the coins are going to go very close to zero and it's going to lose interest. And I think that's the point. We, we don't know. Like it, For it to go up even just to $1, it has to have a market cap larger than Ethereum and Bitcoin combined. And you have these people that are investing that actually believe that that's possible. And that's very alarming, especially, you know, Richard Hart, the creator, it, it seems like he's always opening with this selling point of trying to make people rich, right? That's the big selling point. That's another really kind of red flag. It's not about the technology. There's no utility. People are not using this coin to pay each other or to transit to buy goods. They're not using it for anything because of the gas fees are so high. They're, all they're doing is locking up and getting paid. And the way they're getting paid is by new people joining, exactly like BitConnect. So eventually, not enough people are going to join because the more people that join, the more people that are getting these rewards, the more people that are getting paid. And so you need a constant increase of stream of people buying into the project until eventually it's just going to crash. I would give it a year if that. Okay, but from what I've understood, I don't, <clears throat> not sure it's necessarily important to keep on boarding people, but rather those people that are already on board to continue to lock up and stake. There's something called staking ladders. Are you familiar? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually think it seems to be the same people that are working their nine to five jobs and then increasing their their stake rather than newcomers coming in and um, i mean of course there's a bit of both but it seems to be a little bit more like okay there's an established you know couple of thousand maybe people that are just constantly feeding into it by staking and when they do this... that you know they're taking it off the table so well only one of the early stakers cashes out it crashes the price almost to zero so then once that happens, how many people are going to keep staking? Well, I guess at that point, you don't have a choice to keep staking. But also the rewards and, and the payouts, you have to have that increase of people joining. Because if just one person selling can crash the price, and we've seen that happen, you know, how is this sustainable? 
Well, can you can you highlight that because I I haven't like I started I staked I've actually been trying the product in parallel with my investigation so I staked in September last year and I've staked for one year which is about how long it will take the production and um, you know I'm basically yeah sixty percent down if if I was holding hex but because I've staked. I don't actually hold hex, as far as I understand. I hold something called B shares, and B shares are not hex. So although you know, I see on my wallet, okay, I'm down sixty percent or whatever from my original staking value in hex. Like, it doesn't seem like I'm actually sixty percent down because I, you know, I basically transferred those hex into this B, whatever you know. They call them B shares, C shares, A shares. I, I don't know. I'm still trying to get my head around that stuff, to be honest. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's another smokescreen because ultimately it's going back into hex. And sometimes the B shares are even worse. They were even more down than uh, your original hex shares. So ultimately you are, but you're not. You're not feeling it. It's just like investing until you realize those losses. They're not real losses. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I admire that you trying the product you know, and you're going for it, but hopefully it's not money you're going to miss. No, it's the, it's the production, um, production's idea. So it's the same with the pulse, um, sacrifice. They wanted to try that as well. So I think it adds another dimension, obviously, because, you know, you're in the thick of it when you're actually trying to use, trying the product of this rather than just sort of standing on the sidelines and sort of, but well, regardless, we'll see how those things pan out. But how long have you been like watching Hex evolve? Have you been? I think it was launched in twenty seventeen, right? So. Oh no! About... It was launched. In, it was launched just a couple of years ago. Yeah. So have you yes. have you been sort of observing it since the since then? Casually, you know, it, when it first came out, everybody pretty much you know knew that it was not sustainable. Uh, I've been in crypto since like 2014. Uh, I started making videos about crypto around 2015. It took a sabbatical for a couple of years to start a few businesses, but I've recently uh, came back into the space. And so I saw this interest in Hex. And so I, I looked at it and I was like, you know, I got to start making videos of this because it's not really a sustainable project. I know that you can be lured in and get caught up in the idea of, of these riches and stuff, but it's really not a sustainable uh, plan. And the, the people that are involved, they're so obsessed about it and promoting it and that it feels, I think even them, you know, in the back of their mind, they know it's not sustainable, but it goes with the territory that unless you're promoting it, you have a vested interest in that promotion. So to succeed, you, it kind of becomes like a cult-like platform where everybody's promoting it and talking it up. And then in the end, it's still going to do well because like you said, uh, this everybody's staking Eventually, a couple of people cash out, it plummets the price. Even um, Richard has admitted that one person cashing out can crash the price. So what makes it, what, what makes people believe that it's going to keep going up? I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, there's, there are like certain different key sort of players, if you like. So there are, there are classes. There are like, God, they call them God whales and um, like the staker class if you like. So there are various levels of um, individuals or hexagons mm -hmm. that, that operate. Have you have you identified any of the key players? Because I've come across um, Conrad Zinn and I've also recently been invited into a what I believe to be like a God Whale hexagon God Whale group on Telegram and I'm just sort of absorbing that information. One of one of the guys invited me in there. So so what I'm saying, what I mean is like there, there seems to be these layer these layers. <laughs> no, I'm not going to call it a pyramid, but there definitely seems to be sort of like you know he, you know Richard's sitting at the top, and then there seems to be this kind of bunch of god whales that hold a hell of a lot of hex. And, and of course, I'm going to assume that they are constantly reassuring you that they're in there for the long haul. And that they have no intention of ever selling and i guess that kind of goes with the idea of this richard hart being a billionaire benefactor and that's because he's so rich why would this be a rug pull why would this be a ploy it's out of the goodness of his heart that all of this is, is coming about it's just it's almost laughable 
you know, to, to see this project and see it unfold and see how many people are involved. It's just, uh, it perplexes me. Especially, especially considering some of the fundamental value propositions of blockchain, you know, decentralization, transparency, etc. cetera, um, doesn't, oh. doesn't really come across as very decentralized as much as they sort of blow that trumpet. Oh yeah. Well, you look at Richard Hart and you look at an individual like Vitalik, the creator of Ethereum, someone who is kind of, you know, living the life. He lives beneath his means. He's not a flashy individual. He's an innovator and he's worried about technology and utility. You have a guy like Richard Hart who covers himself in Balenciaga and Louis Vuitton and displays Rolex watches. And this is the individual that people want to put their trust into, someone who doesn't even reveal the country in which he's residing. How much sense does that make? Even, even we know Elon Musk lives in Austin, Texas, you know, but for some reason, uh, Richard Hart is afraid of people, you know, uh, kidnapping him for ransoms and stuff. But Elon Musk isn't. Yeah, and that, that's that's a good comparison because um, I was interviewing with a guy the other day and he said, well, listen, if he's just raised, you know, this many billions of dollars worth of crypto in these in these um, projects, why is nobody in the real world t talking about it? It's uh, there's n there's no reportage anywhere about it inside you know outside the little outside the crypto bubble, which is you know you and myself and many others um, that make videos on YouTube and what have you. So surely you know somebody must must be observing this from the outside, from the regular economy, you know, and being like, well, what the hell's going on here? But it's just silence and i think that in itself is somewhat revealing oh absolutely because there's fundamentally no proof of any of this wealth or of these inflated numbers you know and maybe you could even argue that maybe that's one of the reasons other exchanges have not taken a keen interest in listing hex and we can make up excuses that is we were against centralization but the reality could be that it doesn't pass the vibe check you know it's not gonna it's not gonna show the figures that they claim and thus would not be listed in the first place. So it's like, well, I don't want to participate in something you wouldn't qualify to participate in the first place. I mean, why, why would centralization in an exchange be harmful to Hex? If you're not forcing people to trade on that platform, you're just giving it an option. It's almost as if they don't really want an increase in the liquidity or it's more about this locking up Absolutely. The price would be doomed if you have liquidity. You know, the only reason the price goes up is because of the staking. That's 99% of the network is a forced lockup. So forced that you get penalized if you sell. Like if I was going to, if you said, hey, we create a scam coin. I said, okay, well, we'll come up with our own coin. Well, it's like, well, how are we going to make it go up? Because if people buy and the price goes up and then they sell, you know, what can we do? I said, well, I tell you what, we could do a lockup where people get rewarded free money to lock up their coins and that's going to allow us to inflate the numbers and keep all this cash locked up so people can't sell and that's going to drive the price up i mean it's, it's 101 what so tell me a little bit about what you think goes on in richard hart's mind well to be honest with you i think this is a um you know it's a play to make money and I think that he didn't really have any good ideas as far as innovation and technology to put into a project. So he came up with a new version of a BitConnect pretty much. And that's it, you know, and I think that what he decided, you know, he wanted to increase the value and he came up with these strategies and that seemed like the best strategy, which I admit it really is, you know, locking up the coins and then just trying to make himself look like this benefactor that he's wealthy and get all these people uh, brainwashed. As soon as you have an increase, then everybody comments you might have seen on the video I posted. Oh, but I've made 10,000%. They call me the scammer. Why are you keeping people from making money? He's changing lives. Changing lives. That sounds, <laughs> it sounds so ridiculous. I can't believe people think he's changing lives. What kind of, what, what kind of project builds themselves as the, they're changing lives and making people rich? It should be about the technology. What utility are you bringing? I mean, when I started watching his videos in yeah middle of summer last year you know a lot of the bling it wasn't there i watched that transitional period and um it was largely due to the other documentary that's being made about about him 
I think, um, I don't know what the logic is there, but from what I've heard him say, it's that that's what people want. He, he's trying to in- attract high net worth individuals, therefore he has to wear wear Gucci and have these handbags and stuff. That's, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I think if anything, it does a disservice to the project. It turns people away. Does Vitalik or other people wear wealth and display wealth? Does that attract investors? I don't think so. It doesn't attract my interest. And I don't see why anyone else, if anything, you would be thinking he's mismanaging the money. It, it seems more targeted towards um, more juvenile, like younger people that are maybe more attracted to to such things. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very perceptive, uh, you know, thing. Absolutely. You know, juveniles and young people love the flash and that's a way to get them into it. And they're also less informed and more likely to uh, become fanatics of the project and keep promoting it to others. Yeah, right. Talk to me a little bit about the community. Uh, you, you meant, you know, I saw that you obviously did a follow up, follow up video because you had a bunch of comments on the first one. Um, was that your first sort of intensive experience with hexagons or like, tell me a little bit about what your general reception has been like with them? Well, you know, I really didn't realize that there was such a uh, avid, you know, community around this. You know, I saw it as something, I don't know if you're familiar with Trevon James, uh, was a big uh, proponent of Big Connect back in the day. Well, when Hex first came out, he was, you know, still promoting Hex. So everybody saw it as, you know, pretty much the same thing. And when I made these videos and I see people comment, I noticed, like you mentioned, kind of a juvenile um you know, approach to it, like just the way they speak, you could tell that they don't have a lot of experience within the crypto. The responses are personal attacks. They're not explanations of why I'm wrong. They're, they're just very flat and very targeted. And uh, it's very surprising to see that in the community. Because again, you could, you could argue that this toxic community is somehow not part of Richard Hart, like they're two separate entities, right? So maybe he just created this great project and, and the community is toxic, but that's usually not the case. You know, the, the community creates itself off of the creator. And I think that that's also encouraged. And you heard about the, you know, the community and the devs offering um, Antonopoulos, you know, a payoff to promote Hex. What were your thoughts on that? Yeah, I was a little bit late to the game. I, I guess I saw that tweet. Um, it was brought to my attention uh, maybe a few days or even weeks after the fact. But um, I've, you know, I've spoken with Antonopoulos before as well, and you know, he he seems like a stand-up guy to me. Um, the fact that he posted that and. Um, I know that there's a there's another documentary being made that, and funded very well funded by the Hexacon community. Um, you might be aware of it. It's called the Highest of Stakes. Very slick. A lot of um, Ferraris and Lamborghinis in in the trailer. Oh wow! Um, so, it sounds like the music video funded by BitConnect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. <clears throat> it's it's extremely well funded. I followed the them the the fundraising because they launched well they went public with their production just a few weeks after I went public with mine and they raised yeah like two over two million dollars in ether in in the space of a few days. So I actually from what I when I saw that tweet from Antonopoulos I was like oh that's that's that production trying to get Antonopoulos in front of the camera and. Um, I can understand that because they need to lend a little bit of credibility to their production outside of, you know, just fluffing their own pillows, if you like. Um, Absolutely. Well, I, I think they're going to be hard pressed. They're going to be hard pressed to find it. Although money talks, and if you have enough money, you know, people will fall in line. There was a lot of uh, you know somewhat prominent figures within the cryptocurrency community that, that stood behind Back Connect at one time or another, and it's just it's it's about money. And I think that's where that's the interesting part because a lot of there's a lot of rich people in crypto already, so a lot of them don't need the money, and they actually value their credibility more than um, the money. Which I think Antonopoulos is one one such guy. And um, I interviewed with Eric Wall, who is a Swedish um, crypto uh, hedge fund manager, if you like, 
and um, he's enemy number one for he- the, for the hexagons. And while I was interviewing, while we were there on 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 location with him in Sweden, the other production um, dialed in. <laughs> so we were just wrapping up, and Eric was like, "Oh, I've got another interview now. Uh, well, I've got another, you know." meeting with another documentary hex hex documentary production and i was like oh geez he was like do you want to listen in so we were just standing there listening and it was yeah it was these guys from from la um basically saying we have unfettered access to richard and we need you to come on on um onto the documentary i don't know if he he went ahead and recorded with them or not but um he's literally you know up there with Antonopoulos and um, a bunch of other other crypto guys that, that the hexagons just despise. I don't know if you've watched any of their music videos about they call them furus, fake gurus. They did um yeah, they did a bunch of videos about these. It's it's very interesting culture in uh, amongst hexagons. I mean, I think hexagons you can. The, the community of hexagons that gather around that token, you know, you can see that in a bunch of other projects, but a lot of the other projects that I've been observing over time, they do at least seem to be, you know, they're centralised, but they have some sort of corporate entity, whereas Richard just seems to be out there on his, you know, on his bareback, on his horse, sort of just rounding them up. And, um... I think that's the that's the key difference is because he doesn't want to take responsibility for this this origin address, right? Whereas other Absolutely. other other projects they have corporations that you know the standard kind of capitalist system meets crypto. That seems to be missing absolutely. in Hex. Yeah, this is absolutely all based on trust and trust in Richard Hart. You know, and going off. You know, he's admitted that he has access to the money. He's admitted that it could, he could take all the money if he wanted to, but it's really based on trust that he is a billionaire apparently and, you know, would have no motivation to do so. And he wants to see everybody succeed. And this is just free money. And he loves to always claim responsibility for, oh, I called this top and I called this bottom. And it's a lot of self-congratulations. It just doesn't inspire trust to me. And even if he was the most trust person, trustworthy person in the world, I would look at it and I would still ask for proof. I would say just make the project more transparent. And I mean, it's very easy to do that. Like I say, there are many other projects out there that have a regular corporate structure that you know that owns the origin addresses. I've seen a bunch of them, and they're regulated in whatever country. Um, begs the question: Why wouldn't Richard just you know, if he was really serious about doing you know this empowering the community and getting everyone rich and whatever? Why not structure it in a way that was you know, re- like regulatorable as others. It's not it's not exactly difficult or beyond him, is it? But instead he's chosen to do this sort of renegade anti government, anti regulation approach where he basically is like well, he says he calls himself a cheerleader, not a leader. Everyone's like calls him King Richard and everything, but he just sort of <laughs> shies away from it. Yeah, I, I think it's very alarming when you see a self-community funded project around such a small coin. You know, these things should be kind of independent. You know, you don't see uh, Ethereum devs funding, you know, documentaries about Ethereum with Ferraris and other flashy stuff to inspire people to just dump money in it. And just talking about how it's just going to make you rich. It's gone up 10,000% in the past year. Invest, invest, stake, and all this other stuff. It's a... Uh, you know, it's from the playbook of scams. Yeah, no, you're not the first one to say that. Um, okay, what about the game theory? Are you, like, I don't know your background. What, what is your background? Maybe that would help. Well, well, I've been an entrepreneur about 10 years. You know, I, you know, developer and, uh, you know, I do web design, e-commerce, that kind of thing. Okay. So you understand a little bit about sort of onboarding or sort of, um, you know, uh, customer journey stuff. Well, you know, I tell you that whole that game theory uh, 
involvement is just gambling to me. You know, when it doesn't sound like it really serves a utility within the, uh, you know, within the project. It seems very risk, very risky. Yeah, I've I've actually been trying to um, connect with um, university professors. Like, you know, I'm trying to find people that are are, are sort of able to sort of give a unbiased sort of observation of the game theory mechanics of hex so if you do if you know anyone in that domain you send them in my direction because i've had a few leads but they've gone cold and right now i have like i said i have about 50 plus interviews but they're you know they're a little bit polarizing so i'm trying to find some sort of some professionals that are you know external from so that I can show them the white paper, or I show them exactly how the the mechanics of the of the system of hex works. Oh, I'm they, they can I think that's unbiased observation. That's a phenomenal idea. I'm surprised you weren't able to secure someone already. I, I've got a few leads, but they've gone cold, and it seems to be they. Yeah, I mean, it's a little. It's been very, very difficult to get people like yourself um, on the opposing side. It's very easy to get hexagons to talk, obviously. Um, Plenty of people talking positively about it. Plenty of people saying, I've heard of it, but I've got nothing to say about it. But people like yourself, I think I've only actually managed to secure about five interviews of people with sort of a op opposition viewpoints on the whole thing. And it's a little bit, you know, disheartening, but that's, that's, that's how it's been for the last... Well, I'm about, yeah, like I say, September my stake ends, so I'm about five, six months in. Um, Absolutely. But I need, I need well, a couple yeah. of couple of professors, economics, finance, game theory experts that can just, you know, here's the white paper. This is what it says it's supposed to do. Can you have a read? Come back to me, and we can have a we can have an interview, and I can try to get a, you know, that third perspective because people are always like, you know, it's either you know it, it, try to moving away from this binary yes no black white off on. And sort of put a you know a third perspective in there, because that's usually where the truth lies. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. Oh, absolutely. Some concrete, you know, evidence that something that's being claimed is not, you know, yeah, actually there. No skin in the game as well. You know, they don't hold. Because often hexagons will be like, oh, he's a Bitcoin maxi. Mm -hmm. you, you know, if you hold Bitcoin, you're immediately in invalidated your opinion of hex because you hold bitcoin or whatever but if i can find people that don't hold shit and they don't in they're not in crypto but they're they're capable of reading the paper and giving an uh, you know objective sort of overview of what they think it is this is going to lend my documentary a lot more credibility than the other production because <laughs> that one's obviously going to be heavily biased in favor of richard and his um, dream factory so Absolutely. Well, you know, you got your work cut out for you, that's for sure. Fuck yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> all right, do you want me, is there anything you want me to ask you that I that I might I might have missed? Uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, that's pretty much it, I guess, you know. I could go on for hours about this whole uh, hex and Richard Hart and all this other stuff. You know, I just hope that uh you know, people look at this for what it is and not, you know, for what it's supposed to be. And then, you know, they see the red flags. But, uh, you know, when you have this much money in, the, in productions, promoting and stuff, it can be difficult. And, you know, people want to believe what is being told. That's why it's just such a phenomenal way to brainwash people because everybody wants to be rich. So, you know, part of you may be like, okay, maybe it's a scam, but maybe I can get in and get out before it all crashes. So it's like, okay, well, maybe it is, but I can make some money. So maybe put a little bit of money. And then it, you know, 10 X's. So then you like, you put more and you put more. And the next thing you know, you're part of the hexagon gang and you're in for the long haul and you're the last person to get out, you know? it's It sounds a little bit like crypto in general. Do you know what I mean? Like well, absolutely. But you know, with crypto, you have the liquidity and you can cash out your money at any time without penalties, even coins that allow staking, you know? But you're right. And that's the point, you know, a lot of the, it's very hard to argue against hexagons because they can compare hex to all of the worst parts of any other crypto. And they're like, oh, well, 
you know, you can't do this. Well, there's this coin and they can't do that. Or they used to say this about Bitcoin or it used to be that. So instead of giving you an actual explanation, they do the what about ism. So it's always, well, what about this? And what about that? And so you, you end up getting caught in a circle where you're just arguing with a wall. Tell me about it, mate. I've been talking to hundreds of them for months now on Twitter. So you just, you have to pick your battles. Um, but I, you know, w one of the things that, that I, that keeps me up a little at night is the fact that what if the fucking, what if my fucking stake ends up paying off quite well? And, and what, what happened? What about if my, my sacrifice works out? I'm, I'm going to end up producing a documentary, um, you know, where I've, where I've enriched myself through this process in which I've been investigating, you know, that's quite a conundrum. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know what you mean. And that could be possible, but you know, I, I don't think it's going to happen. If, I think a year from now, we're going to see this crash. I just don't think that, that, you know, and like I said, I think, you know, you see, well, you know, I'm getting tongue tied here, but initially I thought there was not the support. There was not enough people involved to really see this project through a few years. And now with the community and just the effort, it's like, wow, there's some people really going after the marketing to really push this project. But hopefully you can't have a repeat of, uh, you know, Big Connect because people are more informed. I feel like the average person knows more about crypto than they did four or five years ago. And I hope that that will lend you know, them to see what actually is going on, you know, and to be a little bit more skeptical. Because I think four years ago, some people even thought BitConnect was Bitcoin. So they thought if I'm buying Bitcoin, I'm getting it from BitConnect. That's the only way to do it. You know, now they know Ethereum, you know, Litecoin, Bitcoin, they know all these different coins. And hopefully they have the knowledge to steer clear of Hex. But Indeed, it's... Um... Often the hexagons think that, that that I'm an advertising opportunity, so I think they're conflicted in their opinions of how to deal with me on social media, to be honest, because they think, um, you know, any publicity is good publicity. Oh, yeah. That's what they say, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean... <clears throat> I'm not convinced that's true, mate. I mean, it might be convinced, might work it like that in America, but out here in the rest of the world, you know, bad publicity is fucking bad publicity. 